Saskia Nugent. Welcome back to Food Pantry Fine Dining. So in today's episode, I am going to work with something that seems relatively simple, but you can do a lot with it, and it's roasting vegetables. We're getting into the season now. It's cooling down. The weather's getting cooler. And the awesome thing about roasted vegetables is that you can use them in a lot of different other recipes. So you can put together some basic vegetables that you love, roast them off, keep them in the fridge, and then you can add them into a salad. You can add them into some chicken stock or veggie stock. You can mix them in with your pasta. You can mix, mix them in with your mac and cheese. You can fold them into your eggs. Uh, but it's a good way to incorporate some of the more seasonal vegetables that we have this time of year uh, into your diet. When I went to the open door yesterday to pick up what they had in stock, they had a lot of beautiful root vegetables. They had butternut squash, they had russet potatoes, they had golden onions, they had gorgeous sweet potatoes, all things that taste really good when you roast them together. So I'm going to be roasting off butternut squash, I'm going to be roasting off sweet potato, a golden russet potato, a yellow onion, and I'm actually going to add a green bell pepper and an apple to the vegetables I'm roasting off, just to give it a little bit of an interesting flavor mix. Um, what you can also do with these vegetables is you'll be able to take the roasted vegetables and add them into your salad, your pastas, you can add them into mac and cheese. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, you wanna make sure with your potatoes that you have washed them very well. So here I have a sweet potato and I actually also have a golden russet potato. Now, I'm going to keep the skins on because I like the flavor of the skin on the roasted potatoes. But you're more than welcome to take a peeler and remove the skins before roasting. You're also gonna to wanna to cut all the vegetables into relatively the same size chunks. The reason you wanna do this is so that they cook at the same speed. If you have things that are much bigger, they're gonna cook slower, and they're gonna end up cooking slower than the ones that are smaller. So you'll have some things that are undercooked and some things that are overcooked on the same sheet pan. So we're gonna start with the sweet potato, and we're gonna cut it lengthwise into strips with our fingers tucked, And you want to be careful, sweet potatoes are a little tough. So as you're cutting them, you want to make sure that your knife is grounded and you're only using the back side of the knife because you don't want to catch your fingers, you don't want it to slide around. So we're going to cut these into bite-sized pieces. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and bring my sheet pan right next to my cutting board. That way I'm not walking back and forth and dropping things between the cutting board and the stove. And I can just kind of slide things onto the pan as I go. It also is going to help because we're going to physically toss everything together in olive oil and salt before roasting it off. So I'm going to take my sheet pan here, which I've already coated with some olive oil to, on the base and I'm going to just scoot the potatoes right onto the sheet pan. Now, I also have a carrot, so I'm gonna do, with the carrot, I'm just gonna take off the top and the bottom, toss that aside, and again, we're gonna do lengthwise, flat, flat, and you wanna do uniform pieces, fingers tucked. And you're just gonna slide those over right next to the sweet potatoes. So we got some oranges going on here, gorgeous. Next we're gonna move into the, onto the onion. I've cut the onion in half. I'm gonna peel off the outer skin and the first layer of the onion, just cause usually it's the toughest and it doesn't, it's not as fully ripened usually on the outside. So I'm gonna cut that lengthwise. Bite size chunks. Again, trying to maintain the same size for all of these. And then I'm just gonna scoot them over. Now I'm gonna take the russet potato, I'm gonna cut the ends. Usually take the ends off because it's harder to clean and it actually lets you ground the potato on the cutting board as you're cutting it. So we're gonna cut it down the middle. We're only gonna use half. We're gonna do lengthwise. And scoop. Now, this is an interesting fact. I'm gonna start roasting the potatoes and onion and carrot now and give them a couple minutes. And then I'm going to add the bell pepper and the apple. 
This is because the onion and the potatoes are denser and more fibrous. And as they cook, they're going to take a bit longer. And I don't want my apple and my bell pepper to get mushy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just take my hands, coat these in the olive oil that are, is already on the pan. Move this over. I'm going to space it out. You don't want to crowd things. They're not going to cook well. They also get soggy if they're packed on top of each other. Give them room to breathe and for the air to circulate around them as they're cooking. I'm going to add a little Himalayan sea salt. Mix those together. I like putting my hands on my food. If you don't, don't worry. You can use a spatula. Scoop them around. Now, I have my oven on 400 degrees. I like to roast my vegetables 400 to 425 on the lower rack, turning often. You can turn it down to 375 if you want. You want to take it a little slower. I like to hit them at a higher temp to get them nice and crispy on the outside. So I'm going to throw these in the oven. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut the bell pepper and the apple, and I'm going to put them in a bowl, and I'm going to toss them with olive oil and salt in the bowl so that I can just add them directly to the sheet pan when it's time to add them in. I'm going to give the potatoes and onion about five minutes alone in the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and set the timer for five minutes. While I do that, I'm going to slice lengthwise my bell pepper. I would use about half a bell pepper. So, so far I've used half a rusted potato, half a sweet potato, half a bell pepper, and then I'll use half a Braeburn apple. And I'm also going to use, um, I used a full carrot. So I'm going to add the bell pepper to the bowl. Now, again, when you're cutting the apple, you want to cut it away from the core. So you're going to cut it in half, then you're going to ground it, and you're actually going to cut on the outside edges, moving away from the core, so that you keep the core in the middle and you can just dispose of it. Now at this point, I'm going to just slice these lengthwise. and add those into the bowl with the bell pepper. At this point, I'm going to take some olive oil and add that into the bowl and a little bit of Himalayan sea salt. I'm gonna mix those together. And why I'm doing this is so that I don't have to um, touch the hot pan where the potatoes have already been cooking. So it's been five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead over, I'm gonna pull out the potatoes and I'm going to actually turn them while I have them out of the oven. At this point, I'm going to add the bell pepper and the Braeburn apple. You definitely want to use an oven mitt. You want to keep the pan grounded, and you want to move these potatoes around a little bit. Then I'm going to add the apple and the bell pepper to the pan, and I'm also going to spread them out with the potatoes. So at this point, I'm going to add this back in the oven, and I'm going to put my timer on for about 10 to 15 minutes. You want to keep an eye on them until everything looks like it's cooked through. So one of the other things that they had available at the open door was uh, squash, butternut squash specifically. Now, butternut squash is fun. It's fun to cook. You can use it in a lot of things. It's become very popular lately too. And um, a lot of people like to use it in a kind of sweet, savory dish. So people incorporate it into their uh, frittatas. They use it in mac and cheese. They put it in their bolognese sauce. What you want to do with your butternut squash is you want to half it, which I've already done. Trust me, you didn't want to watch me slug it out with this thing. Butternut squash is kind of hard to get open at first. So you want to wash it really well on the outside. Then what you want to do is you want to ground it. You're going to cut it in half. And then you're going to want to scoop out the seeds and the membrane. 
And you can do that in just kind of a swinging motion. You can just kind of scoop around. And just scoop around. And remove the seeds and the membrane. It's not that hard. Move that aside. When you roast it off, I am going to suggest that you cut it into smaller pieces. This is just going to help you break it down easier once it's cooked. I'm going to take the butternut squash half and I'm going to cut it into fours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it flat down on the cutting board and I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut the halves in half again. Now, once they're cut into quarters, you're going to add them to a sheet pan. Bring that over so you can get a really good look at it. All of this orange, you're going to want to roast it skin side down and flesh up. You're going to add a little bit more olive oil over the top. Sprinkle it with salt. And you're going to put it in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes until it's cooked through. It'll be soft in the middle. And the bottom of the skins will be browned. Look at that. Now, as I told you, and... Trust me, you don't want to touch these, so let's get some tongs. Now you have it soft to the touch, and when you flip it over, the bottom is completely browned. What you're going to want to do is you can let this cool down, you can eat this as is, or you can cut it up and you can add it to whatever you'd like. There is something about the mixture of the smell of the roasting potato and the onion and the bell pepper and the apple all mixing together in the oven that just fills your kitchen with a smell that... It smells like fall. It makes me very happy. It's just a gorgeous scent. So let's check on those vegetables. They should be done. There you go. So at this point, what you've created is a roasted vegetable medley, roasted vegetable hash. You can cool it down. You can offer this as a side as is. You can add it into your omelets, you can add it into your salads, you can serve it as a side with one of your main dishes. The smell is absolutely gorgeous. You don't have to roast your vegetables in the oven. You can also roast them on the stovetop. Um, one of the more popular roasted vegetable medleys is actually a mirepoix. Mirepoix is a mixture of carrots, onions, and celery, sauteed. And this can be done stovetop as well. It does not have to be done in an oven. And as you see over here, I have started to slow roast onions, celery, and carrots together with just a little bit of salt and a little bit of olive oil. And what I'm doing here is I'm just letting them saute until the onions are translucent and the carrots and celery have softened. This can be used as a base in soups, sauces, you can add it into stuffing, you can add it into stews, you can mix it with your eggs, you can keep it in the fridge for up to a week. And it makes a great source of added flavor to any of your elements. So that's it for today. Have fun with your roasting.